I'm one of the elders here. Uh, if this is your first time, welcome to our family service. Uh, this is my great joy, Adam's worst nightmare, of us just having great fun and hence the chaos with it. Um, as you probably saw from the video, um, it's really common for the question just to be asked of, who are you? You know, often in life you kind of get asked, what's your name? What do you like? What do you do? In fact, this week someone um, challenged me uh, lovingly and going, why do you like donuts so much? And I said, why wouldn't you like donuts so much? As a way to kind of talk about what I am, who I am, all those kind of things. The, the world, actually, if you, if you look at a variety of stuff that goes on, you have so many different tests to try and understand who you might be. The world wants to define who you are. Hey, who, who likes football? Good, let's pray for you afterwards. Um, <laughs> in that kind of way. But even if you like football, it's not just you like football. You like football teams. And there's conflict in what football team that you, that you like. Yeah? Who's going to watch the World Cup? Right. We'll pray for you afterwards. Yeah. But even in that, like, it depends on what country you're from. Majority of us will support England. But if you're from another country living in England, you must support another team. It's another bit of identity that is put on you. In this way, the world kind of talks about this concept of identity in a variety of different ways. Sometimes big, sometimes small, sometimes medium. But it's always about identity in some fashion. But the reality is, when we put identity in stuff, they sometimes shake and go. Looks go. Yeah, so if I would have thought, looks go. Yeah, bodies change. Especially if you eat too much donuts. Talents fail. Yeah, these kind of things, credentials crumble. Money disappears. There's a variety of things that the world says, put your life on. And the reality is, they all go. In fact, um, on a, there's a site called BuzzFeed, and this used to be the craze maybe five years ago, where even on Facebook or whatever, there used to be all these different quizzes that you would have to fill in that would then determine your personality and determine who you are. For example, plan your future house and we'll tell you what Disney character you are. <laughs> it's dumb. <laughs> Let's be honest. My favourite one here is, um, what colour best describes your inner personality? What a joke. I'm feeling a bit muddy today. No, that means you need a shower. That's what that is. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. The fact that this is how it works. But let's be honest, this might seem ridiculous, but the world does this in different bits. What you like determines who you are. What you do determines who you are. And as I said, all those things go. However, what does Christianity say about who we are? It's funny, isn't it? Like, really, the, the top, I would say, who you are is one of the top questions in life. I, I would say they kind of go like this with Christianity. I think number one is, who is Jesus and why do I care? Second one is, what am I having for dinner? And, and third one is, who are you? I, I think that is one of the most important questions in life. So what does Christians believe? Well, here's my aim. My aim is to try and tackle this question today. This is what I believe we are. We are called... By Christ. That's who we are. Christ as a little acronym. You might have already seen on your seat, we've got little bookmarks. These are for you to take home, for you to enjoy, for you to also put in a book. Hey, if you haven't got a book, we've got a bookstall at the back that you can buy a new book. Plug in, plug, plug. But this is for you to take. And what I'm best, this is all I'm going to do. Is whilst I preach, I'm just going to go through all these acronyms here. What, what, we are called by Christ. What does each letter in the acronym stand for? That's it. And hopefully by that, I'm able to just paint the picture. Daniel, you're going to have to stay there. Otherwise, I actually will kick you in the face. Is that okay? No more cursing, yeah? If, if so, then Auntie Gemma Lessons will have to come and grab me back. Right. My aim is to just cover this and cover identity in that way. 
So first one, C. We are chosen in Christ. Adults of the church, you might recognise these chapters, these verses, just as a small hint. We ain't moving from Ephesians 1 to the end of the year, at least. Kids, we're going through Ephesians, and I'm going to use Ephesians 1 and 2 to help talk about identity. So, chosen in Christ, Ephesians 1 verse 3 to 4, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed you in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. You are chosen. There's no rejection when it comes to Jesus. When you are put in front of Christ, he looks at you and goes, I choose you. I want you. It's a tremendous thing to be aware of. It's wonderful. The moment that Catherine said, I'm happy to go out with you, was like, oh, I'm chosen by Catherine. Do you know what's more amazing? Being chosen by the Lord God Almighty to say, I want you. I know you. And with all of that, I want you. It's similar to kind of the game, like being chosen, being part of a game. I, I remember at school, I don't know about you were, you, were you ever the kid that was always chosen last for games? I, I was, yeah? I had photos and my mum told me off because I was going to mock my younger self for how much of a loser I looked. And my mum told me off, so I'm not going to show it. But I was a nerdy fat kid. I was so nerdy. In fact, in games, when they were picking games and picking teams, I was the one after the leg brace kids. They would, they would pick a kid who was, who was literally, like, physically not there at that moment. They would pick him instead of me. And I would, I would just be like, oh, okay, I'll just be the last one chosen all the time. Dodgeball, I was chosen last. I was too big of a target. <laughs> yeah, it's that, that kind of thing. Is a reality. Christ, when he looks at me, he doesn't go, you're an extra, you're a last choice, or anything like that. He looks at me and goes, you're my first choice. I want you part of my team. I want you better than part of my team. I want you part of my family. You are chosen by God. In fact, it says in in Jeremiah 1 verse 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. But before, think about it, before there was a moment of pregnancy or anything like that, God goes, I knew you. I knew who you were. Before you were born, I consecrated you. I formed you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. What he says to Jeremiah, what he says to you is, I appointed you as a child of God. However that looks, changes for each one to another. That's the beauty of the walk with God. But he doesn't change the title of saying, I chose you. C, chosen in Christ. Ah, oh, sorry, can't spell. H, handiwork of Christ. Ephesians 2 verse 10. For we are God's handiwork, creating Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Handiwork is NIV, truthfully, it's just to make the acronym work. ESV says something like workmanship. Workmanship. You are created. You've been made for a purpose. You've been placed here for something that you were called to do. Similar in a game of making plasticine dogs on skateboards. You are created, thankfully, for a greater purpose than a dog on a skateboard. You are created for God's glorification. You are created from uh, dust into formation. In fact, in, in this imagery in Genesis, it says that you are made in the image of God. You are the workmanship of God. You are the handiwork of God. He has chiseled you to perfection for what he has called. He looks at you in satisfaction to go, look at my handiwork. When I was um, at school, I did DT. I I had to remind myself, this was about 13 years ago, which, yeah, I'm still 29, people. Ian, I'm still 29, not 30 yet. But still, I remember making this, and I I found that at home when I visited my mum. And um, it's this thing here, so it's, this, it's a lamp, and at the bottom has got a speaker in it, so it's, I called it Lamp P3. You're welcome, world. Yeah, Amazon, hit me up. And um, I, like, I made this, and I remember at the time being like, wow, I'm really impressed by this. And when I went home, it's still on my shelf, and I'm like, I'm not as impressed by this, but I'm very impressed that I made this. I look at this, and this is my handiwork. Here's the point. 
God looks at you and says, my handiwork, I love you. You are made for purpose. You are made. And he looks at you, and trust me, he's better than a GCC DT project. He looks at you at perfection and goes, my handiwork, I love you. Every bit, as you're becoming more like me, I, I love you. And, and I'm so satisfied in my creation. We, we, it's so helpful because it means that we're not based on merit. Do you know that? Your identity is not based on merit. Your, your identity is based on your created. You're the handiwork of God. It's based on his plan. Therefore, I'm saved by grace when I fail. But when I succeed, it's still for the glory of God. It's a tremendous thing. Spurgeon says it like this. He says, you've seen a painter with his palette on his finger. And he has ugly little daubs of paint on the palette. What can he do with these spots? Go in and see the picture. What a splendid painting. In an even wise way does Jesus act towards us. He takes us, pours smudges of paint. And he makes the blessed pictures of his grace out of us. It is neither the brush nor the paint he uses, but it's the skill of his own hand which does it all. When you look at a painting, you don't just admire the painting, you admire the effort of the painter. When you look at a sculpture, you don't just think about the sculpture alone, you admire the thought and the effort and the workmanship of the sculptor. When you look at yourself in the mirror, don't think about yourself alone. Think about the creator that had perfectly formed you and made you as his handy work. You are God's handy work. Oh, redeemed in Christ. In him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. I couldn't just have the little sentence. All of that is great glory to God. You are redeemed. Transformed. Changed forever, bought by him. Redemption is used normally as a legal term. That's what it's normally used as, as a legal term, which basically means I'm securing the release and recovery of stuff because I've paid the payment for it. Similar to bait. It's kind of, kind of that similar concept of I paid a bell so I can release things that have been trapped in. Here's the kicker. Humanity came with a cost. Humanity, because the original sin had a cost against its name. And what happens in humanity is we all try to do stuff to try and be better. Have you ever heard Christianity is just about a religion of doing good stuff? You heard of that? Yeah, it definitely isn't that. If you think Christianity is about doing stuff better or being a good person, then I lovingly want to say, let me smash that lie completely. Christianity has nothing to do with that. Christianity is to say, I'm not good enough. I can't do this. It's the offence of the cross, which basically says, I wasn't good enough to do this, but Jesus paid the cost. Jesus paid the price. I can't earn enough to satisfy the wrath of God who did Jesus. I'm redeemed by God. He paid the cost. All my effort and energy to try and meet the asking price will eventually fail. And yet Jesus surpassed it all. When I sing, when I survey the wondrous cross, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the price that he paid. That's what that is. I'm looking at the price that he paid. Jesus entered in as saviour, died on the cross, satisfied the wrath of God and paid the cost. So I can repent, turn to him, look to Jesus and know therefore I belong to him. Chosen by Christ, a handiwork of Christ, redeemed in Christ. That's the first three. We're going to tackle the next three in a bit, but I'm going to hand over to Tom for another game or something, innit? Okay, cool. Alright, thanks for that, Jeeves. That was really good. 
and we'll hear from you later. But for now, we have another game. Another game, yes indeed. Can we get that up on the board? We have Guess the Prize. So we have five items, I believe, that are going to come up on the board, and we have two teams here, and you have to guess how much each of the items is. Can we get the first item up on the board? Now we have a jazzy necklace. Ooh. Oh, indeed. Can anyone from this side guess how much this jazzy necklace is? Yes, it's real. Whether you think it is or not. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, it is sold on Amazon. <laughs> close, close. Right, about this side. How about this side? What are we thinking? Best bet is £4.50. What can we get on this time? 59 49 Right, okay. Ooh. Okay. I can tell you that that is not £49.50 or £4.50. That is £10,000 on Amazon. <laughs> on Amazon. Whether it's real or not, we don't know. <laughs> so these guys are the closest. You were close up, so you win. <laughs> Should we go on to the next one? So we have a one dollar coin. One dollar. Can we guess how much this one dollar 1884 mint coin is? This side first. Twenty. Okay, we've got twenty this side. How about this side? Thirteen thousand. I can tell you now that that coin is one million. What? <laughs> so I don't know who's buying that. Who's These guys oh, win. It's one oh, it's one oh. Pounds, not close. One oh. Three to go. Next, next one, please. Boris Johnson, Canada. <laughs> Mint condition. <laughs> what are our thoughts? Nine hundred pounds. What about this side? 99? 5 pounds! 999. What's that? 20! 999. 999. What do you think it is? Who's closer? My math is good. But it is 13 pounds. You win. Yeah! They said 20, we got 13. 13, right? No, 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 no. Yeah, so Oh, okay, 13, so 2-1, 2-1, however, we'll say, I would probably pay you £13 to get that Canada rather than you buy it. <laughs> now, on the screen, we have 100,000 sheets of paper. Ooh. How much is 100,000 sheets of paper? Tom, you tell me. It's quite heavy, isn't it? <laughs> that is quite, quite heavy. heavy. What are our thoughts? £600. £600? What are we going with? It's a thousand, uh, hundred thousand, hundred thousand sheets, sheets of paper. Of paper. Okay. Are we selling with ten thousand? Five hundred pounds. We've got a thousand. Okay. Five hundred, a thousand. Not. Right. What's the price? What is the price? One thousand. One thousand. What money? Exactly. And now we have a standard rubber. Standard rubber. A normal rubber. How much is a rubber? 39p. 89p. Tom. What about your side? 50p. 39p. Okay, can we get the actual price of this rubber on the board? No! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is this ridiculous? What's this I rubber? found this on Amazon. No word of a lie. It's 388 pounds. <laughs> Who's buying that rubber for 388 pounds? Who's closer? <laughs> 39p or... We won 50p. <laughs> you win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, two or closer. 3-2, don't be wrong. 3-2. Yeah! Jesus, <laughs> team wins. <laughs> very good, very good. Right, okay. Um, before we move on to the next part of the uh, preach, the, the three letters. What's that? Notices. Okay, we've got some notices. Um, 
First of all, uh, we cannot forget an offering. Um, so if you're a visitor, uh, the baskets are coming around now. Please do not feel like you have to put anything in. But if you'd like to put anything in the offering baskets, please do. Yeah. 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 They'll be coming around. <laughs> um, the next one. Um, okay, the next one, we have a video, and this is... Uh, is it next week? Next week is the New Ground Sunday and Offering Day. So can we just quickly play the video? Greetings to everyone in the New Ground family. Such a privilege to be part of uh, this family of churches. My name's Dale Barlow, and I'm one of the core team. Every year since New Ground began, we've taken up a yearly offering to support all the work that God has called us to. And this year, the New Ground Offering 2022 is gonna be taken up uh, over two events that happen at the beginning of November. The first one, the Leadership Conference, which is the 3rd to the 5th of November, and then the day after, which is New Ground Sunday on the 6th of November. So I thought it would be good to get a few friends to tell you the kind of things uh, that the money that is given on these offerings is used for. Uh, and then Nicole is gonna speak at the end uh, and just explain a little bit of how you can get involved. Supporting partner charities like Jubilee Plus as we equip and inspire local churches to reach out and serve the poor in their communities as they share the love of Jesus in very practical ways and lift people out of poverty. Supporting other spheres in new frontiers like Disciple Nations, which is based in Zimbabwe and serves a number of nations in Southern Africa. And they look to bring transformation of local communities through a partnership of practical help, such as farming and livestock rearing, and planting of churches through raising radical disciples of Jesus Christ. Supporting various initiatives, such as the New Ground Racial Diversity Network, which provides an opportunity to bring people together for prayer, discussion and equipping as we look to build churches that truly reflect the heart of God in our day. Supporting church plants in places like Rotterdam, which started during lockdown. And now meets every week in the city, reaching out to the million people who live there. Supporting the ever-growing number of churches from Brazil that are joining New Ground, who are looking to be part of a church family that is relational and committed to working together to see the kingdom of God advance. Supporting our initiatives to help churches raise up the next generation of children and young people who are going to take Jesus to their friends, their classmates and to the ends of the world. Supporting our existing work in the various nations of Europe, like France, where we currently have eight church plants or church planting projects. Which we would love to see more established, reaching out in their local communities and beyond to the rest of the French speaking world. Supporting the various meetings and events and conferences and prayer moments. And also the people who travel on behalf of New Ground. And go and help and support and encourage our churches and church leaders in a number of ways. Some churches will be taking an offering in their local churches and then giving it to us directly at New Ground over that weekend. And other churches will be encouraging people to be giving directly to New Ground. Uh, next week is obviously New Ground Sunday. Um, all the information about how to uh, give, if you want to, will be in the email, and we are encouraging you all to uh, give directly to New Ground. So more information will be coming out very shortly. Yeah, do you want to say something? Uh, yeah, very quickly. Uh, thank you for all your donations that we had uh, up to this week. That uh, has a, a van that's left yesterday from Orpington. <laughs> Um, and we took over the stuff that we've collected this time. But the, another van load is going on the 10th of December. So really from now, if you want to start donating stuff, we would really appreciate it. We want to try and bless them. There'll be two or three vans going in December. Um, we've already got a couple of guys that want to do the driving. Um, just to let you know as well, we will be flying out in between these trips that are being driven out in vans uh, to buy stuff to keep providing, because the need is still very great out there. Uh, and it's just providing great fellowship and encouragement for Ukraine churches who are literally going straight back into the country to take this stuff in. Cool. Um, 
and we have three more, because uh, I've added two. Um, the next one is the weekend away, which will be uh, around Easter time. Um, more information <laughs> will be coming out soon, um, but if you want to share your interest, please share it with the elders, um, and they can give you more information. Book. 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 <laughs> Book. Okay. Uh, the next one, um, as you could see, Judah is wearing some lovely merch. And, um, isn't that good? And uh, we also have some t-shirts as well. And there are a lot more items on the uh, store. Uh, and this is for the Hope Next Generation, which is our, our kids' work. Uh, all the way from zero up to 18. So if anyone would like to also get stash, you can get it here. Um, don't do it before 17th of October, because that's already gone. It's the 6th of November. So if you have any youth, or if you want to get any of the, uh, the stuff yourself, there's various colours, various different items. Uh, please grab it. Grab it soon. Okay. And the final one is just um, from me as uh, leading pioneers, the 11 to 18 year olds. Uh, we have small groups tonight, so if you don't know about that, please come and let uh, come and speak to me. But we are going to be restarting Rooted, which is for 11. Very good. Uh, 11 to 14 year olds. Um, it will not be during the week anymore. It will be on a Sunday morning. It will be the first, third, and if there is a fifth week of the month, on a Sunday morning during the preach. Um, if you'd like to get to know uh, the leaders running it, Judah's going to be doing one, Matt, uh, and then the other youth leaders will be getting involved as well. But if you want more information, come and see us. And that's all the notices. There's a lot today. Boom. But let's let Jesus finish Boom. off. C-H-R, chosen by Christ, handiwork of Christ, inheritance, uh, no, redeemed by Christ, but I've already given away the uh, inheritance of Christ, Ephesians 1. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were in the first to hope in Christ might be the praise of of his glory. You have wealth in Christ beyond more than you know. In this world, it runs on money. You get money, you get stuff. You get money, you get stuff. You get money, you get stuff. And what often happens is that if you are given money, wonderful, you can then get stuff. And, and what the world kind of works in different kind of legal ways to do that. Some of it is through savings. You save money to buy stuff. Some of it is through wills. So i.e. loved members of the family, they unfortunately pass and they write a will leaving money or leading wealth to kind of their uh, next of kin or whoever they write in the will. And that is often kind of detailed as an inheritance, i.e., I have not earned this, but by someone that I know. Is it flagging a lot? Is it okay? Okay. Alright. Um, someone that I know have left me wealth that I have received, not because I've earned it, but because they've given it to me out of love. It's no simpler way to put it, really. We have inheritance in God. You have not earned wealth. You have not earned salvation, and yet he blesses you with it. Doesn't matter the price, he's paying it. He, he has given it to you. In fact, let me use this as an example. Um, it would be, um, you know, we have these, these chocolates that we bought to give out. For those who have won games, notice we haven't given up prizes today. So what do you do? But actually, if we, if I was to just take these and I was to, to throw them out, you haven't earned this. You've done nothing to earn any of these chocolates, and yet, by the grace and love that I have, I will bestow <laughs> upon you great chocolates of bounty for you to have and enjoy. Sorry, for you to have and enjoy. Gemma, go along. For you to have and enjoy. This is not, I'll put these at the back. These are. You have not earned this, and yet you're given it. You have not earned salvation, and yet Christ 
paid the price to give it to you. You have not earned being able to walk with God and yet he has blessed you with it. You have not earned being loved. You have not earned being saved. You have not earned being able to pray. You haven't earned being able to pray. Ethan, do you want one? Yeah, come on. <laughs> there you go. There you go. He didn't earn the chocolate. <laughs> And yet, by, by his mercy, by his grace, our loving Father pulls that out for twice. Boldly approach, that's right. Isn't it amazing? It's a phenomenal thing, inheritance. You haven't earned this, and yet by his mercy, by his love, you get it all. You don't get some, you don't get parts. You get it all. Inheritance of Christ. Seated with Christ. This one I love. I so am grateful for this one. Seated with Christ. Ephesians 2. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him. In the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show us the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Despite the chaos that might be going on, despite the instability, God, in the same way in Genesis, makes the world, does his work, and then sits to rest. And he pats the sea. To say, come, sit with me, come rest with me, come be in this place next to me. I love it. We um, give two examples. Uh, Judah, a uh, joy at this moment, he has just such a, not this Judah, um, he has just such a fun um, exploration of life right now that what happened about when we're sitting on the sofa, he looks at us and he gives out this kind of ex- excited squeal. And he crawls, and then he somehow manages to get up and puts his hand up on the sofa. And we're like, yeah, rejection. No, of course we're not. We're we're like, come, come sit with us. And he's just wanting to crawl over us and whatever, you know, classic baby to toddler transition or just crawling over everything. I get to sit with my boy and just enjoy him. You get to sit with God. And just enjoy him. No more, no less, no effort, no work, no nothing to kind of kind of work up and do. no, you just get to sit with God and enjoy him. If you're a Christian, you get to rest with God and enjoy him. I'll give you the second example. Um, I, I really love this photo. This might be uh, bring up some feelings for people, but I love this photo. This photo was with the the Queen, the Queen, and um, and uh, uh, Duke of Edinburgh sitting with their great-grandchildren. Now, I think about this picture, and I think about probably the 20 minutes that everyone had to endure while the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh was trying to gather everyone together, Prince Philip, trying to gather all the kids and all the camera people were like, oh, go, go here. Okay, um, ma'am, you, you hold King, you know, Prince Louis, and oh, grand and Prince George is standing well. Come on, come on the side, and trying to gather them. I think about the 20 minutes was pause to try and make this nice photo. And then I think about the four hours or the three hours of time that these kids didn't see this figurehead as some sort of um, tourist attraction that people are taking photos of, but as their great-grandmother and their great-grandfather and the fun that they played and the games that they had. And as all they walk away, away from all of the kind of paparazzi and the pictures, that they just have fun with their family, their great-grandmother. And yet, you know, in this moment, they come sit next to me, come, let's play on the sofa. And the Queen, royal, had his great-grandchildren. They've done nothing to earn being able to sit next to the Queen. And yet they get to sit with the Queen and enjoy the Queen and celebrate and play games with the Queen. Guess what? You get something way better. You get to sit next to the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The Majestic One. You get to play with Him. You get to do life with Him. You get to adventure with Him. 
He calls you by name and says, come listen. Let's have a cuddle on the sofa. Come. Let's just, let's just relax. Come here, let's talk through life. Let's talk through what you're going through. Come. Sit next to me. You are seated with Christ. You are that with God. You're not someone who has to do certain tick box things to try and earn anything. You are that relationship with God. You are adopted. You sit next to his royal throne with him. Where everything else might be chaotic and unstable, you are in the most stable place. Seated with God. Last one. Temple of the Holy Spirit. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. You are not lonely. You're not abandoned. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. This truth should be a enablement to deal with every single day. To every single moment. God has not disappeared in God. Kids, you need to know that this is not an adult thing, by the way. You don't turn 18 and then suddenly go, Oh, you're the right age, fine, I'm going to live with you. No, no, the moment that you give your life to Christ, you become a temple of the Holy Spirit. The revelation of faith comes and, and now God of glory lives with you. He lives with you. I'm really grateful for this. I'm really grateful for the beginning of Acts where the Holy Spirit is sent because God knew that we couldn't do this by ourselves. God knew that we couldn't do this. And yet, God sent the Holy Spirit, fully God, to be among us in our midst, to be with us in our midst, to stand next to us. You were made as a God's temple, which means two things. Number one, you are never, ever alone. Ian's going to help me, help, hate me for this analogy. But I don't like football, but I'm aware of a team called Liverpool. I'm aware of this. And I'm aware that there is a concept, <laughs> there's a concept about the 12th man. And, and basically, what I'm aware of is that they sing a song called You'll Never Walk Alone. And at the beginning of games, it's the, the whole stadium sings, and, and it's often written um, guy in, in, in reports of, of Liverpool games that this 12th man is singing. It's the idea that the, the crowd are all singing loudly, you'll never walk alone, that the people on the pitch know that they've got this person in the form of a massive crowd playing with them. I'll tell you what's better than Liverpool. Anything because it's to do with football. But I tell you what's better. I tell you what's better than this idea of you'll never walk alone with a 12th person. It's the congregation of angels. It's the congregation of the bride of Christ singing in great glory. Rejoice to the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. It's God singing next to you saying, come on my child, you've got this. You don't need a 12th person. You've got God Almighty with you every single day because you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are never, ever alone. Never alone. Second point. You are, you are here to live in the purpose that God has given you and in the courage that God has put in you. 1 Peter 2, 4 to 5, and summarizes it like this. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, that was Jesus. But in the sight of God, chosen and precious, Jesus and now you. You yourselves are living stones are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You are part of a royal family. You are a spiritual house to glorify God. 1 Corinthians 10 31 says, whether I eat or whether I drink, whatever I do, do all things for the glory of God. It's a funny statement, isn't it? 
If I'm having dinner, I'm doing that to glorify God. Why? Because I belong to him. So everything I do now glorifies him. When I'm having my cup of tea, peppermint tea, obviously. I'm glorifying God. When I go to work, that is part of me glorifying God. When I go to bed, it's part of me glorifying God. When I go for a walk, it's glorifying God. When I attend youth, it's glorifying God. When I invite people over, it's glorifying God. Guess what? Your entire life is to reflect the glory of God. Here's the question. Uh, is your life reflecting the glory of God? You are to live with a purpose. Kids know that your purpose doesn't start again when you finish university. Your purpose starts now. It's already started. God wants you to know that you are a temple for the Holy Spirit. When he calls you to be obedient, you go. And by the way, you don't need a specific word to kind of understand that. It's, we're given the Bible. And the Bible helps us learn what obedience is. The Bible helps understand what the relationship with God looks like. Mm. If anything, a very helpful reminder is Matthew 22, where it says the great commandment, love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind and strength, love your neighbour as yourself. Just understanding and unpacking that is what it looks like. But every day when you go to school, if your friends are you know, making fun of other people, are you loving the Lord by joining in? No, you're not. Just being able to love God in all that you do. Your purpose, kids, your purpose, and for all of us. Your purpose doesn't start at a certain chapter. Your purpose starts today. Your purpose has already started. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. We are called by Christ. We are called by Christ. Chosen by Christ. Handiwork of Christ. Redeemed by Christ, inheritance of Christ, seated with Christ in a temple of the Holy Spirit. That is your identity. The moment you gave your life to Jesus, that is who you are. Nothing more, nothing less. Because Jesus is the one that has made your identity. So what do we do? I'm going to watch a quick video. And I'm going to lead us in, in a bit of prayer. When you decide to place Jesus at the centre of your life, when you decide to know that he is God and follow him, you are saved. You are saved from your sins, you're saved from your brokenness and saved from an eternity separate from God. This means you being saved becomes your identity. That is who you are now. But God doesn't just save you and leave you behind to figure out life on your own. In fact, you're called for a much higher purpose. Your life won't be the same again. When we know who we are in Jesus, we receive a confidence in sharing his words with others and a boldness from the Holy Spirit and security in our identity in Jesus. Your purpose in this life is to share the word of God with others. This can be scary and daunting to hear at first, but once you know who you belong to, you will step into your purpose and be fruitful in everything that you do. You will be able to live a life way beyond your capabilities because the Holy Spirit strength covers your weaknesses. Remember that you are saved. You're called today and every day in Jesus Christ. Do you want to stand with me? Do you stand? For those who have given their life to Christ before, I hope today, if anything, was just a reminder of who we are. That's all. I hope it was a reminder of who you're meant to be. While the world is speaking variety of different things over you, about you, about what you've done, what you've done, I hope today has just been a recalibration. But for some of us here today, maybe Christianity and this idea is a bit foreign or we haven't given our life to Christ, or we feel like we've given our life to Christ a long time ago, but we haven't been living away recently under this banner of identity. Well, I want to make something quite clear. When I say we are called by Christ, this is a calling for every single person. But it's a choice you have to make to say, I want to be in that. I want to be chosen. I want to know that I'm the handiwork of God. I want to know I am redeemed. I want to have inheritance in God. I want to be seated with God. And I want to be a temple of the Holy Spirit. It's a choice for you to make. It's an easy choice. 
mixed with a wonderful cause. It's called repentance. It's basically saying, Jesus, I want to follow you and I repent from what I've done. I turn 180 away from my sins and I turn back to you. The cost is ourselves. But the method is very simple. So sorry, thank you, please. Sorry, Jesus, for what I have done. Thank you that you died for my sins. And please, Holy Spirit, help me to live a life according to your glory every day from now on. I want to just give anyone who has never, or maybe for a long time you felt like a prodigal, felt like you've been away from home for a long time, I want to just encourage and give space that anyone wants to be called by Christ to do it today. So if you're standing and you've given your life to Christ previously, please know this is just time for you to reflect as I just leave this. But if you've never given your life before, or if you haven't kind of belonged to Christ for a long time, you felt like a prodigal, I'm just going to ask everyone's eyes to shut now. I believe that what happens in our heart is helpful displayed sometimes by what we do with our action. And so if you want to give your life to Christ, despite your age, despite maybe who you are, I'm going to ask you now, while everyone's eyes are shut, to just lift up your hand now. If you get le- never given your life to Christ, or if you want to recommit your life, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. So it's really between you and God. I'm going to lead you in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you chose me. I'm sorry for how I've lived my life. I'm sorry for the things I've done. And right now there might be things that have just come up for you now. Why just give them to God? I ask for your forgiveness. And I thank you, Jesus, by your blood, I am forgiven. The slate is now clean. I am cleansed. And because of what you have done, Jesus, I am free. Thank you, Jesus. I am chosen. I am your handiwork. I am redeemed. I gain inheritance. I'm seated with you. And I'm now the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I pray. Holy Spirit, help me to live a life for you from today till the end of time with you. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, I really want to speak to you. I've got a book that I'd love to give you. Um, It's at the back, it's not with me, but still I've got a book that I'd love to give you. If you prayed that prayer a second time or again, then we have a prayer team that would love to pray for you. I'd love to just lay hands and pray and really just do some more work that God has done in. Great. We're going to call it there. I hope it's been fun. Please take your bookmarks. If you don't want them, don't put them in the bin because we'll give them out to the youth. Be blessed. Have a great, great week. And we'll see you next week for the New Ground Sunday.